Hey, what up, Big Rat? Three, Ted McCaddy. Let me start by saying radius. Thanks, I appreciate the plug. And I like your video. I already approved it for a video response. Thanks, with, with your one video, I actually got like eight more subscribers. So I, I really do appreciate that. Um, today, I'm going to make a couple videos today. Hopefully, bef before it's not too late. I want to make this review and against all odds, predictions, and a Q&A since I have enough questions. Um, okay, so it starts off with the main event mock in the ring. Nash goes off about Joe, which really seems pointless to me, but <clears throat> it's so negligible that I'm not even going to talk about it. Um, Angle and Sting shows some dissension signs, you know, that's kind of obvious. Now look at something that really creeps me out. Angle and Sting were fighting. That's not creeps me out, though. Kiyoshi gets a rough cut. Hmm. This guy has had what? Correct me if I'm wrong. Four matches? No one really knows him. I haven't seen him on Impact for like three weeks. So why does he get a rough cut? Rough cuts usually... They usually do introduce people like they did with Sojourner Bolt. But they're supposed to do it, you know, when he gets a little more airtime. Some people who even forget who Kiyoshi is. When they said rough cut Kiyoshi, I'm like... Who? Oh, oh, that, 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 that guy. You need Kiyoshi to be shown on a weekly basis, like Sojourner Bolt was. Then give her her rough. Then give Kiyoshi his rough cut, because some fans might forget. It might be a little confusing. Also about rough cuts, there's a lot of them that are unfinished. Am I wrong? Like, besides the Matt Morgan and the Angelina Love one, there was like one on Roxy. There was a bunch of them that they only had one segment. And this one, Kiyoshi got two segments in one day, which was really confusing, because that. If that's his entire rough cut, then it's definitely negligible. If you spread it out to two weeks, he'll get more to wide, widespread attention. But, what are you going to do? Today, of course, fucks up on the commentary. In the motor she gets walked to the ring, he says, They may be careless, but they truly do represent the front line. And then like a millisecond later, he says, Even They're only part of the front line by name. Their actions are never, ever, can never, ever be part of the front line. And I'm like, What? What? what, what? I used to like today. I didn't like him. I just thought, you know, he wasn't as bad as Don. And now I'm starting to think, hey, your glory days are past you. Um, <clears throat> Consequences Creed gets attacked by everybody, which the attack didn't even look that good. They should have been a lot more than just like a chair that, to me, looked like it barely, to me, looked like it barely touched them. A chair to the elbow, because they put it, they put his arm around the pole. Here's the pole. And they put his arm here, and then Beer Money hit the chair from right here. So they kind of like got him on the corner. It looked really bad. Um, and then Young comes in, helps Lethal win the match, and then Shelly demands a title match against him against the odds. Like I've said numerous times, <clears throat> Young versus Shelly equals no build up whatsoever. Bad idea. But <clears throat> what are we gonna do? I agree with Radius. Young gets way too many title shots. He's already got the exhibition title one and then taken away from him twice. And if they do it a third time, I, I might leave Eric Young forever if they do it three times in a row. And Chris Sabre's not going to be at ringside, which I guess is good, just because we're going to get a good match out of it. See, this is one of those instances where the match quality might be good, but the storyline isn't. And that, to me, is what I was trying to say in my last video, for those who really didn't understand. Yes, I know the match is gonna look weak, but you'll still get you still get good entertainment out of it. Okay, uh, Booker T versus Shane Soul first. What's with Booker's accent when he was in Jim Cornette's office? It was like, it was like Brooklyn plus African plus Texan. It was really really weird. And now it's for the title. Correct me if I'm wrong, but did it say Booker T versus Shane Soul? Grudge match, and now it says Booker T versus Shane Soul Legends title. So yeah. They really, I don't know what the heck happened there. Oh, beautiful people cut a good, pro there were a lot of good promos tonight. Let me get into that later. There were very good promos tonight. And the one earlier by Sting and Angle wasn't even that bad. They did one by 3D, which was pretty good. Or by Sting, which was pretty good. And I'll get to the ones now. Beautiful people cut a hard as nails promo saying how much they hate them for embarrassing them. And that's good. I'm finally seeing the beautiful people, you know, coming out of that girly princess's reign and actually, you know, toughen up, which is what I've wanted from them ever since they started. So that's pretty cool. Shane Soul versus Shikondo Mashiro. I actually like Soul. I didn't see his Genesis match because I, I, I didn't watch the pay-per-view until around, 
until around the consequence the consequences creed match or to the very end of that. So I didn't see the <clears throat> I didn't see the Shade Soul match, and everyone gave it like one star on YouTube. So I thought, oh, okay, this guy must suck. And now I thought they're gonna have the exact same match now. Let me let me take a look at it. And I didn't think it was bad. I actually thought he was pretty entertaining. You know, he has like he has that jump step in him. Like when he does a clothesline, he can do a jump. He does a jumping bulldog, which only like CM Punk and Matt Hardy can do it perfectly. And Funaki, surprisingly. No, not Funaki. Uh, Cody Rhodes just like grabs him. He actually like grabs him and jumps a few steps. I, I didn't I didn't think it was that bad. He he kind of interested me. Booker T comes in as the referee when the referees are knocked down, and he starts counting to ten. You know, counting to ten, counting show on the ground. And the fans are with Booker T. The fans are counting three, four. It looked really bad. You could see Booker T trying to scream at them so he could get some heel heat, but it just wouldn't work. Obviously, match ends, Booker T attacks Sewell, and Sewell actually fights back, thank God. He's not getting buried again. He's actually He actually fought by Booker T, and security had to separate them. That makes him look tough. tough. It makes a lot of sleep though look very, very stupid. Well, Booker T just owned him. Beautiful people defeated Roxy and Taylor. Pretty obvious. And then Governor Palin comes back. She did a weird inverted suplex, which I could have done without. Wasn't really that impressive. Uh, I think by this point, Kurt Angle cut a promo saying he could take care of 3D, Team 3D on his own. Like he said, he won't tag in Sting. Because Sting said, if anybody besides Sting is carrying the world title, it will be nothing. And then JB asked, well, what if Kurt Angle wins the title? And then Sting gave it no comment. So now Kurt Angle's like, don't worry, Sting. I won't tag you in. I can take care of it by myself. Very good problem. Ah, oh, damn it. Here, let me get to the other stuff later. Oh, uh, unfinished rough cuts. Abyss versus Mac Morgan is not really going that well. I don't want Abyss to have this turn. I want Abyss to stay timid. I want him to stay timid and afraid. Lose to Morgan. Morgan beats him up. I've said this to a thousand times. Abyss attacks Morgan at Destination X, and then at Lockdown, Abyss has this whole raaaaaah attitude. But now, doing it now, what? What's gonna happen? It's gonna be a one month feud for a feud that's been building up for six? This feud's been building up since. No surrender, actually. Whatever since Abyss was afraid of weapons. And now, like, what are they gonna do? Is it gonna be a one month feud with all this? Because once you have a barbed, a no holds barred match, you have a cage match in two months, so what are you going to have at Destination X? It's, it's really, really confusing. Abyss does a fantastic promo where he screams out saying, I'm going to kill you. I always thought Abyss should never have talked. He should have stayed quiet because that's what his character was. After seeing his promo, I couldn't have been wronger. You really have to see it. Go on YouTube, find a stream, find something. He is fantastic in his promo. Now, hopefully I have enough time. Uh, just one little thing. Uh, I'll get to the Against the Odds and the Q&A in two more videos. Brutus Magnus. This is what I always hate when you guys come in. They put him against the jobber. They get the job done like that. And all you see is the guy dominating. You never really see his fault. I thought my theory was a new guy should fight a regular opponent so you can see how he would do in a match. How he would, you know, come back from behind, in and out. It wasn't much. It was Shark Boy, but it was something. It was better than bringing a nobody. And they actually had somewhat of a match. You saw some good moves out of Brutus. Brutus, and this is also a thing I should have thought. They should. I should have always thought that they should have given the microphone to a person after his match. And, of course, Brutus does a pretty good job. First, first, first probably does a pretty good job saying how he's dominant. I like the old English thing. And he has an open challenge for against all odds. I'll do a prediction on who I think that person will be. Um, it was overall... last. The first hour of last week's Impact was just that funny. But the, as a whole, it was terrible. Jeff Jarrett's going back next week. I didn't mention that. This Impact was pretty good. I kind of enjoyed it. Like I said, I actually like Shade Souls match. I like Brutus Magnus' debut. TNA finally does something right. Oh, and uh, obviously the Mafia interferes in the Team 3D Sting Angle match. And Sting Angle fight at the end. Who could have seen that coming? Um, I have some matches that I'm going to predict is going to happen against the odds. Sorry about the throat. I have a cold. Um, but I'm going to make two more videos right now. I'm going to try to upload all three in concession. By tomorrow morning, all three should be up. And I think that's it. I'm Big Rat. Three, ten, and I'm out. Peace.